So let's make sure we only show the error modal if we entered something invalid. So in the add user component, currently, if we have an empty input or an invalid age, we just return. We cancel this function execution. I want to continue doing that, but in addition, I also want to show an error message in the future. And therefore, we need a way of dynamically showing and hiding this error modal. Put in other words, we need to update our UI conditionally based on the question if we have an error or not. And what does this scream for? State management. We need to manage some error state. And that could be a string, like the error message, that could be an object which bundles error, title and message, whatever you want. But we need to manage such an error state so that we can set it to we have an error, in which case we want to render the modal, and so that we can set it to we got no error, in which case we render nothing. I mean, we still render the form, but we wouldn't render the modal in that case. So we need an extra piece of state here, use state, and the initial value is actually undefined, so I don't need to pass any other initial value here between the parentheses. Now I'll name that error and set error, because in the end I'm going to manage some error information here. And now again, it's your app, it's up to you how an error should look like for you, if it's just a string or if it's an object. I will manage an error as an object here. So here, in that first validation part, I will call set error and set this to an object where I want to have a title, like invalid input, and a message where I say, please enter a valid name and age non-empty values, something like this. And this will set the error state. Now I'll do the exact same here in the second validation function. I'll change the title to invalid age, because here we know that the age is the missing piece and that the age is invalid. And I'll have a different message as well. I'll have a message that says, please enter a valid age greater zero. So that's my error message here. So we set our error state in both cases, but we set it to a slightly different object in both scenarios. The object always has the same properties and that is important so that we can reliably use it, but the properties hold different values. Now with that, that error state snapshot will hold that error whenever we call set error, because then the entire component will re-render and error will hold that latest error object as a state snapshot. Hence, we can use that down there in our JSX code to conditionally render the error modal. We just need to check if error is a thing, and if it is, with that AND operator, we output error modal. Otherwise, if error would be undefined, well, nothing would be rendered here for this line. And that is how we can conditionally render a JSX element. We need wrapping curly braces around this because this generally is a JavaScript expression, just one which then also holds a JSX element again. So now the error modal will only be output if we have an error, and now, since the error also is a more complex object with a title and a message, we can utilize that title and message to output it as the actual title and message in our modal. So here I'll bind title to error.title and message, of course, unsurprisingly, to error.message. And uh, with that, if we save this, we get nothing here, but if I submit an empty form, you see here is my modal. Right now we have no way of dismissing it, the button doesn't work yet, but we can of course reload the page for now, so that I also show you the invalid uh, age case. If I enter this, you see I get the invalid age error. So that is working, that works exactly in the way it should. Now let's make sure we can also dismiss it by either clicking on the backdrop or by clicking on the OK button. Now for that, what we need to do, of course, is we need to clear our error state, this error state. Because if we have an error, 
if what's stored in this state snapshot is truthy, which a JavaScript object is, will render the error modal. So the only way of getting rid of that modal is to reset error to undefined or to null or to any other falsy value so that this condition is no longer met. Now to achieve this, I'll add a new function here, my error handler, which uh, gets no argument, where I simply call set error and set error to null to set it from an object to null. Null is treated as a falsy value, so now this would no longer be rendered. Now the only question is how do we trigger this error handler function? Well, I would say from inside the error modal, because inside of the error modal we get this button and we get the backdrop. And on both we want to register clicks and, well, trigger that error handling function. So on the div here, which renders the backdrop, I'll add an onClick prop, which is available on every default HTML component React offers, and trigger the props on confirm function, let's say. Again, it's your component, you can name this prop whatever you want. You can name it on handle error, or as I do it, on confirm, whatever you want. The same for this button, I'll add onClick here. And we can add on click here because our custom button component, which, which we're using, forwards whatever we pass to on click to the native on click prop. Hence, we can add it here. And here, I also want to trigger props on confirm. And when I say trigger, I of course mean that on the on confirm prop, we also expect to get a function which we in the end just forward to the on click prop. And somewhere down in that component tree, somewhere this will then be bound to the actual DOM element and a click will trigger the function received on the onConfirm prop. So where do we get that function? Well, in the place where we use error modal. In the add user component, we use error modal. So here we now need to add this new onConfirm prop, which I just worked with inside of the error modal. And then here, I want to pass in a pointer at the error handler function we defined. So that this is the function which is ultimately triggered when we click on the backdrop or when we click on the button. And with all of that, if we save this, we go back. I can now click here, get my modal, click somewhere on the backdrop and it disappears. Click on the OK button, it disappears. Let's uh, try a valid input, that works. Let's try an invalid input. We got the modal, we can dismiss it and of course fix our mistake. And that all works and that's the finished first app. Now the app itself is nice, but of course not overly complex as I already mentioned. But we used all those core features and building blocks that are important for React. Components, props, state with the use state hook, lifting state up and all of these things. We used styling, we passed functions between the different components. So all these core patterns and concepts, which you basically need for every React application you're going to build, we have them all in here. And that's why this hopefully was a great practice and why we're now well prepared to continue.